To head off on an adventure means to head off into the unknown and face many unexpected surprises. You are no doubt aware that Solar Impulse has had to temporarily postpone its round-the-world voyage and will start again next spring. But this journey has already been so extraordinary that I must carry on telling you all about it. As I was saying, children, adventures can sometimes be affected by unforeseen events. This is the case with Solar Impulse. So, unfortunately, its world tour has now had to be interrupted. Oh, oh no, Maestro. It was such a great adventure. Well, I've never really liked adventures myself. Okay, we knew it would be delayed, but what's the problem? Why can't they go on? Well, there were a couple of technical issues, but the main reason was because of phenomenon that mankind has still not mastered. The sun's rays from mid-August in the Northern Hemisphere, we are already starting to move towards winter, and so the sun does not shine enough to fully recharge the batteries to allow the plane to complete the journey from Hawaii to Europe. For this reason, it was deemed reasonable to set a new departure date next spring, when the good weather has returned. Our plane is going to follow the cycles of the seasons, but if you like, let's take advantage of this break to look back over the history of aviation. Haven't you got any funny stories instead? Some 500 years ago, Leonardo da Vinci was already thinking about how man could fly. Oh dear, it looks like they had trouble in landing correctly back then. Yeah, that's right, that's funny. Man was continually developing machines so he could fly, but the first ones couldn't really take off. Little by little, these machines did succeed in leaving the ground and to fly for longer and longer. Here, the American Wright brothers managed 260 meters in less than a minute. Huh, I can run faster than that. After many attempts, they managed more than a kilometer in a well-controlled flight. And in 1909, the Frenchman, Louis Blériot, was the first man to fly across the channel. And weren't there any female pilots at the time? Of course not. They were too scared, and flying messed their hair up. <laughs> so, I see you don't know about Adrienne Bollon, who was anything but a scaredy cat. In 1921, she flew over the Andes, the longest mountain chain in the world. This expedition earned her the respect of many a toughened pilot. And when did planes start to carry passengers? The first airline company was founded in 1919. But at this time, the planes flew very low because their cabins were not pressurized and the journeys took much longer. In 1946, Paris to New York used to take 24 hours and with a stopover in Ireland. Since then, and with the use of the jet engine, millions of people have been able to fly much more quickly all over the world these engines have an issue. They consume far too much fuel and are highly pollutant. And it's these problems that our modern day explorers wish to highlight to the entire human race. So they have combined their round the world adventure with the campaign, Future, Future is, is clean. clean, to tell everyone that there are renewable energies. And that it is very important that we all use them with new clean technology which are both efficient and easy to use. That's right, and if we all do this, we will soon be able to stop using fossil fuels. And guarantee a clean future for our wonderful planet. And to do this, our heroes will continue their efforts, tirelessly targeting politicians around the world. Let's hope that the latter can take some key decisions during COP21, the World Climate Conference, that will take place in Paris at the end of 2015. Hey, that's you there, maestro. Yes, I took part in that amazing paper plane chain, which was organized by Future is Clean. Anyone who wants to get involved in favor of our planet Earth can do so in this fun way. So why don't you?